Four months ago, I decided to commit myself to the hardest challenge of my life. Walking five kilometers on my hands. I expect this to take from anywhere from eight to 10 hours. To put that in perspective, the average time it takes to complete a marathon is four to five hours. And if I can do more than five kilometers within eight hours, I will surpass the current Guinness World Record. Now you're probably wondering how the hell I got to this point in my life. Well, to understand that and how I hope to help you with this story, we need to go back to the beginning, all the way back. Now we're gonna get a little bit off topic here, but I want you to stay with me. It's all gonna make sense by the end. From a young age, I was diagnosed with dyslexia, autism, and ADHD. Because of this, I was always told that I wouldn't be able to do things like everyone else. This made me become deeply insecure and really limited my beliefs of what I thought I'd be able to accomplish in this world. So ever since I was a kid, I never thought I'd be able to be successful in anything, so I didn't even try. And because I wasn't able to do things myself, other people did the work for me, and I just sat back and watched. Now you're probably thinking, Liam, what the hell are you complaining about? That sounds great. Well, it sounds great never having to work particularly hard, but the truth is, if you have other people solving your problems for you, you'll never develop the skills or determination that comes from learning how to solve those problems. You become lazy, you never fail, but you also never find out what you're actually good at. This point in my life is called the comfort zone. You see, the comfort zone is something we all live in, but your relationship with the comfort zone will directly impact your happiness in life. And I can guarantee if you're never in discomfort, you'll never reach what you're truly capable of in life. Society has conditioned us to always want to be in the comfort zone. We're all in the pursuit of happiness, and we think by seeking comfort, this is how we'll find this. And it sounds like it makes sense, but the reality just isn't the case. You see, happiness is an emotion. It comes and goes without us having much control over it. So you can't really dictate whether you'll be able to maintain this or not. Because you can be briefly happy at times even when you're going through a day of depression or sad during extremely joyful times in your life. What we should be pursuing is called eudaimonia. The word eudaimonia is an ancient Greek word that appears in many philosophical texts. Historically, eudaimonia was actually translated to the word happiness, however, it's now thought of as an inaccurate translation. The difficulty of accurately translating this word lies in the difference between ancient notions of happiness versus more modern ones. The best translation we have for eudaimonia is likely fulfillment. What distinguishes happiness and fulfillment is pain. It's very possible to go through a great deal of pain and suffering while being deeply fulfilled. And in many cases, it's necessary. In this world we live in, suffering is unavoidable. And trying to live a pain-free life will certainly cause you to suffer the most. So this begs the question, how do you seek fulfillment? Well, you need to find a purpose in life. And you can have more than one. It can be big or small. Your purpose can even change. But living purposefully, whatever that means for you, is the best way to live a fulfilling life. As I slowly started to learn this, I tried to push myself to face more challenges in life and seek a sense of purpose. And that's something far more powerful than a brief state of happiness. But despite all the steps I took to improve and push myself out of the comfort zone, I still didn't believe in myself. But underneath all the doubts, there was always this burning desire deep inside of me that wanted me to challenge myself and see what I'm truly capable of. I feel like we all go through these moments in our lives where we want to overcome something we previously thought was impossible. It's different for everyone. For you, it might be to quit the job you hate and pursue a passion, overcome a fear, or develop a deeper understanding of yourself. And I can't tell you exactly why I decided to do this, but for me, I've always been fascinated with people who take on these massive physical challenges that push your mind and body to the limits and that everyone else thinks is crazy. And I used to think that these amazing people were just different to me. But one day, sitting in my bed, probably watching a few inspirational YouTube videos, I said, fuck it, I'm 
going to find out for myself whether this is the case. So I thought about it for a while, came up with a few crazy things I could try, and then finally I thought about doing handstand walks for distance. And after finding out that there was a world record for it, I got scared. I thought, what if I say I'm going to do this and fail? I couldn't imagine myself getting anywhere near to breaking a world record. And when all of these doubts came flooding back, I knew I had to do it. So I committed myself. I started training and announced that in four months time, I will walk five kilometers on my hands so that I couldn't back out. I love it, where'd you come up with that? I have no idea where I came up with it. Cool. Okay, so we're exactly two months out from our 5k. So we've got a two hour um, session that I've got to stick to the pace I plan to do the full thing at. So I've got a lot of long sessions now, just getting my body ready for the full thing. And this will be the basic to start training a bit more intensely with it. So we need 12.5 lengths from here to the other end, um, to the 50 meters. All right, let's see how it goes. So just finished there, only managed to actually do one hour and a half because my hands were just in bits to be honest. Just need to rest up when my hands heal in the next couple days, do it all again. Even washing my hands is so sore. That's my second two hour walk done. Still not feeling great. And it was, it was really tough to be honest, it's like just mentally so draining. And just to think like this is just two hours. I just really don't even know if I can do it. Let alone in the time I want to do it in. But I guess we'll see. Now it's just time, head home, get iced up and get some food. My back is absolutely killing me. <laughs> I feel like an old man right now. I'm so dead. But yeah, honestly, like, I can still feel like so much pressure in my like head um, from doing the handstands. Because even now, like, my eyes feel so puffy. Um, and yeah, when I'm doing the actual handstands, I literally like I feel my eyes bulging out and I have to press them back in. Um, yeah, so not the best, very weird. It's what it is. So we'll just reassess, see how we get on in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully we can pick things back up to a good place. During my first few longer sessions, I got off to a rough start. I wasn't able to quite reach the targets I had, but over the next few weeks, things were starting to fall in place. Okay, so it's around 6.30 right now. I'm making my way down to ASV. We're gonna be going for around five hours today and uh, seeing how far we get. These are the kind of days where you just really don't wanna do it. And you have to do it anyway. Just hope, well, 
and hope it is going to be worth it. I'm hoping that I get the result I want with the distance that's going to benefit me for getting the time that I want when I do the full thing. But even if I don't, from putting in this work of doing that, putting in this hard effort, it's going to be worth it because it's going to help make me a better person. It's going to allow me to push myself to somewhere I've never pushed myself before. That's going to be really beneficial later down the line in life where you start to run into certain struggles, whether it be mentally or with other aspects of your life. That's what I keep telling myself anyway as I walk on my way there. Another issue we're having is we got my charger for the GoPro, so there's a good chance I'm going to run out of battery while I'm doing the time lapse. So that's pretty annoying, but we'll see how long it lasts. I'm at um, around four hours, a tiny bit over now. I only have two more lengths to finish, but. My, ha my hands are so messed up. Like blisters, my wrists are in agony. It just seems like an absolute mountain to climb, but hopefully when I check back in, I'll have done this too. And that's it. I'm just really trying not to quit. I set myself 31 lengths to do within five hours, and that's what I'm hoping to do. And then the annoyance just quit right at the end. We did it. I'm almost dead, but we did it. That was by far the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And we're only just over halfway of what I actually need to do to complete the full arm challenge. Oh, Jesus. Completed my... <laughs> 31 and a bit lengths really. And it took around four hours and a half, around about that time. As much as I'm hating it at the same time, I'm loving this challenge so much because like every time I do this, I'm still, I'm pushing past my expectations of myself and what I think I'm actually capable of. It's not like I just, I'm training right now and the whole challenge, like once I've completed the whole thing, it'll be like, wow, this is something I never thought I could do. Like this right here, this session, of doing five hours of those handsome walks really like I thought I was gonna quit towards the end there it got so tough it was unbelievable an hour to me was hard half an hour was hard and I've just kept pushing past what I think I'm capable of and that's it's fucking amazing like that's what I'm doing this for and it, it feels amazing and that's what I want to inspire other people to do as well <laughs> I might need to buy some more gloves these ones are <laughs> wearing away so, this is my hands right now. You can see you got some blisters, pretty swollen. So, not great. Doesn't look too bad, but it hurts like hell. Body is really beat up now, so I was considering going for a swim after this, but I don't know, I'd probably end up drowning, especially because I'm a pretty bad swimmer anyway. Um, so, maybe just slowly walk home. But I'm really happy and yeah, great things to come. So I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> and after this, I was feeling really good and very confident that I'd be able to complete the challenge. But unfortunately, it wasn't all smooth sailing from here. So we 
the biggest um, run I do until the actual thing. That puts me two hours off of um, the full challenge. Really feel I'm motivated today, but hoping once I get going, I'll get some kind of surge of energy. I'm gonna see how it goes. So I actually forgot my camera again for this session. So there's no footage of it, but we're just gonna skip to the end so I can update you guys on how it actually went, which was not the best. So we are all wrapped up here. Just did my six hours, but it went really shit. So pretty unhappy with that. I'm literally three weeks out where I've got to do two hours more than this. It's just, it's really funny because like I know I'm better now, like physically, I'm more fitter, my skills are better at doing this than a couple weeks ago and the weeks before that. But just mentally today, again, it's funny because it just never gets easier mentally. So for me, when I did my five, five hour one, I was so fast, like I did really, really well on that one. I only slowed down on the last hour and that was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that went really good. Did a lot better than what I did today. Even though I, physically, I feel that I am in better shape. That's the weird thing is I think that this might generally come down to just on the day. If my mind feels at the right place, whether I'll be able to do this or not. I don't know, still some things to work out. We're gonna see how it goes these next couple weeks still got the right attitude I still believe I can do it it's just gonna be really tough so it's new yeah. get my head down keep working and hope to pull it off after my six hour session where I aimed to do 3.7 kilometers I started to get a little worried as I struggled a lot and I was only able to reach 2.5 kilometers not even as much as I did during my five hour session that I did weeks before but honestly, I still felt quite confident that I would be okay for the actual challenge. I don't know if I was just being naive or not, but I think I was just trying to be as optimistic as possible, as otherwise my spirits would have dropped leading into the actual challenge, which I really didn't want. I was so confused as to why this didn't go well. I felt fitter. I was around three kgs lighter, which should have helped a lot. Still not exactly sure what I could have done to help with this issue, but I knew I had to change something. And I started to think that maybe it was my testosterone starting to drop a bit low for being in a calorie deficit. As I found that my drive to push through my training sessions had really dropped. You see, I wasn't anywhere near shredded at this time. I got fairly lean, but nothing crazy. And honestly, I was planning to lose another three to four kilos because I wanted to be as light as possible. However, I've always felt at my best when I've had slightly higher body fat percentage. And typically for anyone who's in a calorie deficit, if you're already a healthy body weight, your testosterone is going to drop. And some people can maintain their testosterone levels at lower body fat percentages, but I'm just not one of those people. So I actually made the decision to actually up the calories into a mild surplus in the hopes that this would help. But at this point, I really only had a few short sessions left. So I wouldn't actually see if this would help with more challenging workouts before the actual event. And even for those short sessions, I didn't really have much mental drive to do them. All I could do now was hope for the best. Then three days out, I started to carb load. Time to carb load. I didn't really have a strict protocol in place for this. I just reduced my proteins and fats a little bit and bumped up the carbs. The reason why it's so important to carb load before an endurance event is that your body needs to have enough energy to fuel you throughout the event. So, good. so you're essentially building up those energy stores to use later on. Okay, so it's the day before the event, 29th of May. So I'm just getting everything organized just now. And this is everything that we'll be bringing down to the event. So most important things got GoPro. So I've actually got two GoPros, one's charging right now. Unfortunately, this one's a little bit older, so it will actually require me to, well, not me, but my assistants, um, helping me and swapping out the batteries probably every 90 minutes or so. 
So that's a little bit annoying. The other GoPro I have can just charge continuously as filming, so that's handy. Got my iPad, so that's gonna be used as the timer um, so that the camera can always see the time that it is, so you know it's real and there's not been any editing or anything like that. Got the rep counter. So this is all the gear that's gonna be on me. So got the wrist straps, got all my gloves that I need, the watch so I can work on my pacing myself. I'll also have some of these handy plasters. Um, so they're padded. So that's gonna help me get just a bit extra cushion on my hands to keep them from tearing anymore. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then this is kind of all my, my therapy stuff. So if I get any knots in my muscles, got some tape as well. And ice packs, which are gonna be an absolute saving grace. The drugs wouldn't be possible without the drugs. Got this little band here. So if I need to just sort of stretch out anything, it's gonna be handy. Got my nutrition. So probably just gonna have this. It's probably the only thing that I'm gonna eat. I might end up getting a snack or whatever from the vending machine but we'll see. Um, I don't really want to be using the bathroom at all, so I don't plan to eat too much. And I've also just got these hydration packs, so they've got quite a lot of calories in them as well. So it should be all good. And yeah, these are all the liquids that I'll be probably having. So we've got a nice cheap energy drink, um, Lucozade's water, boom. Cones, this will be helping me with my pacing. So I'll have one uh, one cone around every 10 feet so that I can know if I'm going to be on track pacing wise and obviously AirPods help me power through music and then these will be for the GoPros as well. And that's it. That's all the equipment we have. Nothing really to do now except rest. Really need to get an early night. It's super important that I do that. So I'm actually just away for a walk just to ease my mind, do something relaxing. And then after that, quick bit of food and then bed and yeah it's really important that I get an early night which I don't do often but I'm really gonna just make sure I sit there watch nothing go to sleep yeah wake up tomorrow get after it so yeah that's the plan and I guess I'll check in with you guys tomorrow wish me luck and before I knew it the day was here As I was getting ready to start, I was so nervous. I had spent months of my life picturing this moment. I'm about to do the biggest race of my life and I'm the only one here. And really, that goes for anything. You could be racing against hundreds of people, but the most important competition will always be between you and you. I was nervous, but at that start line, I was ready. Let's fucking go. I started off really fast, probably a little bit too fast, but I wanted to make up some good ground before any pain set in. Keep it going, it's just started. <laughs> It was going really well until just before about three kilometers, but before I knew it, the pain had started to set in. It wasn't unbearable, 
but I took some painkillers in the hopes to preemptively stop it from getting any worse. But I think taking the painkillers and then spending hours upside down doesn't really go that well together. Because I started to feel extremely sick, which ended up being the bigger of the problems. And I also didn't think that it really helped that much with the pain either. I would say around just past three kilometers is where the pain and the sickness started to become unbearable. Everything was so sore and I felt so sick, I couldn't even think properly. I was really struggling. But in my mind, I knew I wasn't gonna give up. I had to keep pushing, even though the pain was so bad. I'm just trying to motivate myself in any way possible. Big slot. Come on, just slam me. Slam me heat. I'm listening to music to get me hyped. I'm playing inspirational movie clips that I love, like Rocky, Pursuit of Happiness, Coach Carter. And I'm saying all of these amazing quotes remind me of why I'm doing this and who I'm doing it for. And there was this one quote in particular that came to mind that I've always been really intrigued by but it never really made sense before. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we consciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. The reason we don't fear that we're inadequate, but rather fear that we have unlimited potential, is that if we were powerful beyond measure, we would always have the ability to move forward. But moving forward requires energy. It requires a lot of pain and suffering, disappointment and lots of failures along the way. But that's scary, so our mind tells us to take the easy way. It tells you you're not like those successful people, so don't even try. Unless you think that you have limitations. But that's only true if you let it be. To me, this used to be impossible. But after going through the hardest four months of my life, a constant battle with myself, I've walked on my hands until my skin's ripped off, I popped blood vessels on my face, cried and I've thrown up but today all of the hard work paid off it didn't matter the end result if I got the time I wanted or not the true result is who I get to become from all of this hard work that I put in this is the true benefit from pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone it doesn't matter what it is that will push you to your limits it doesn't matter how your limits compare to anyone else Winning is fun, but you can be first or last, and the only real loser will be the person who didn't get in the game. So find something that scares you, something you never thought possible. Whether it's a big or small thing to anyone else, it doesn't matter. Do it, and you won't regret it. How does it feel? Do you want to want these pills? <laughs> oh, blister. Oh, Jesus. Mm. That's a lot of skin. Do you want these pills? Yes. I'm going to feel it. Mm. 